Good morning. The suspense is over. You already know what it is we will be talking about this morning. Number 10, chosen by Northwest Church of Christ in 2020, was Dare to Stand Like Joshua. And we will look at that this morning. I just want us to think for a moment on your own, in your own Bible study, your thoughts about Joshua, what comes to mind? This great, uh, great individual of, of faith, and passion, and desire to serve the Lord willing to be a servant as long as he needed to be a servant. And we're going to see that that is true with Joshua. And yet, as we read about him in the Old Testament, we don't see him ever step to the right hand or to the left from the word of God or from the instruction of Moses. He is a magnificent man and he is given to us for a reason so that we can know what it looks like to stand up for what is right, for what God has given to us, which is eternal. Joshua, the mighty character in Scripture. You may notice the illustration is given to you because we want to dare to stand like Joshua. That means something. Where do you stand? Where is this young man standing? On the Word of God. That picture is there for us because everything is tied into that. Everything is connected to that. Joshua, who is he? Well, the Bible tells us that he is an Ephraimite. He is the son of Nun. You know, his name isn't actually Joshua. It's Hosea. If you look at Numbers 13 and verse 8, we're told he is Hosea, son of Nun. But then in Numbers 13 and verse 16, he's no longer Hosea. It says that Moses named him Joshua in Numbers 13 and verse 16. Hosea means salvation. Joshua means Jehovah is salvation. That's an interesting change of names. Salvation to Jehovah is salvation. One important thing we're going to have to take note of, and I hope I don't leave it as we go through this, Joshua, we, we think of him at, at the Jordan River, where he says, we're crossing the river with emphatic uh, passion that this is going to happen. And it's, it's good to see that. It's good to watch that. That's not Joshua and where he began at all. Joshua was born in Egypt. Joshua grew up in Egypt. His father, Nun, was a slave. His mother was a slave. He lived in a very humble beginning in a slave's home. Even Joshua himself made bricks for Pharaoh. This family, Joshua, the son of Nun, his parents, they cried out to God as they suffered under the orders of Pharaoh and as they cried out under the whip of their taskmasters. He was there. He experienced all of that. There's nothing special about him in the beginning. He's simply a slave of a foreign nation, and he is worthless to that nation. He's just another worker. God will say to Moses in Exodus 3 and verse 7, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. It's important for us to remember Joshua's there. He is working and serving as a slave with no rights. He's making bricks along with his brethren to help Pharaoh build the, the buildings that he desires to build. Joshua's there. From my calculation, he's somewhere between 40 and 50 years old when Moses confronts Pharaoh for the first time. This is important for us because I cannot and you cannot blame your upbringing for all the problems you have today. Imagine if Joshua looked at his condition when he was born, the way that he was raised, the, the way that he was beaten by other men to, to, for, to, for him to work harder and to do more, that he could say at any time, I give up. This lot in life is terrible, and it was. But I want you to know that how and where I was raised cannot keep me from serving God. It cannot dictate who I will be now, who I will be today. We may feel, there's a temptation for us to feel more faithful, that we would be more faithful if things were different. Right? I could do so much more if. I could serve God more faithfully if. Joshua takes all of that away from us. And he says, no, 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 don't go there. Have faith in God. Wherever you are, wherever you stand, no matter how you were brought up or what conditions you are in now, serve God with all your heart. That's Joshua's message. Because for almost 50 years, he lived his life as a slave. Joshua is not going to let us marinate in our self-pity. 
when you study Joshua, you can't sit there and continue to feel sorry for yourself because he is an example for us. I'm going to dare to stand like Joshua. That means I will be vivacious in my boldness to contend against error. I will be vivacious in my boldness to stand up for the truth and to venture out into uncharted territory. How can I do that? By standing on the word of God. There's some things out there that make us nervous. I'm not sure I want to go do that. I'm not sure I want to go out that far. That's outside of my comfort zone. Joshua says, hey, welcome to the club. Do it. Stand on God's word and show this world who you are and who God is. That's what Joshua did. We read in Judges chapter 1 that his generation was faithful to God without fault until Joshua and those who were with him in his age group passed away. And then the children fell away from the Lord, but not while Joshua was alive. Imagine a poor slave who's counted worthless by the nation who rules over him will lead another nation to glory. How? By standing on the word of God. We're going to look at that a little bit this morning. And the first thing I want to share with you is we think about the song itself. We are bound for Canaan land Tenting by the way. That means that they were on their way to Canaan land and they dwelt in tents. Remember the pillar of fire or the pillar of cloud? When it moved, they packed their stuff up and they moved. And so they're tenting by the way. They're setting up in tents and they're waiting to be brought into this promised land. Now during that time, in Exodus 24 in verse 13, we know that Moses is going to be called up to Mount Sinai to visit, to speak to the Lord. We're told in Exodus 24, 13, that Joshua is Moses' assistant. Not a bold, great leader. He's still serving. Joshua is Moses' assistant. That's what he's been called to do now. And he's okay with that. The two of them are on Mount Sinai, and they stand there with Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and the 70 elders of Israel. God will call Moses to the very top of the mountain, and Moses takes Joshua with him. Somewhere along the way to the top of the mountain, away from the 70 elders, Aaron, Nadab, and Abihu, Joshua stops because it is just Moses who will go up into the presence of the Lord and speak to God for 40 days. There was a time during the conversation between Moses and Almighty God that the Lord says, the people have sinned, go back down. And so Moses turns from the Lord and he goes back down to find out what this sinful group of people is up to. Look at Exodus 32 with me. We'll uh, we'll read what they are doing. Many of you are familiar with this place in the Old Testament. Let's just read it together. Exodus chapter 32. Now God has told Moses to go back down and to deal with this rebellious people. Exodus 32 in verse 15. Starting in verse 15 says, Moses turned and went down from the mountain and the two tablets of the testimony were in his hand. The tablets were written on both sides, on the, on the one side and on the other they were written. Now the tablets were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God engraved on the tablets. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people, as they shouted, he said to Moses, so Moses is coming down, Joshua sees Moses. Joshua is the first person that Moses meets on his way down. Joshua says this, there is a a noise of the war in, in the camp. But he said, Moses says to Joshua, it is not the noise of the shout of victory, not the noise of the cry of defeat. But the sound of singing I hear. So it was, as soon as he came near the camp, that he saw the calf and the dancing. So Moses' anger became hot, and he cast the tablets out of his hands and broke them at the foot of the mountain. Moses, for the first time, sees what this wicked people are doing as they've turned from God and made themselves a golden calf. And he is furious, so furious, that he breaks the work of God. The tablets that were given to him by God himself. Where's Joshua in all of this? Think about it for a moment with me. Where is Joshua? Moses is in the presence of God, receiving this instruction. The people have turned their back on the Lord. They've made themselves a golden calf. We're told in Exodus 24 that Moses was there for 40 days. Joshua's between the camp and he's in Moses and God ultimately. What was he doing? 
for 40 days. We know what the people were doing. They said to Aaron, as for this Moses, we don't know what happened to him. Make for us a God. What's Joshua doing? Waiting. By himself. What a man. How many of us would sit in one place where Moses left us and just wait? How long would it take for you to say, I don't know what happened to Moses. What should I do? I hear a sound of, of war in the camp. Should I go help them fight? Moses, our, our, our Joshua, as we look at this, never budges. He stays right where he was told to stay, and he's a blessing to us for that. He is waiting on the Lord. Listen, they are bound for Canaan land. They are living in tents. And while the whole nation turns to idolatry, Joshua is waiting on the Lord. Now, this verse should mean something to us. We are bound for Canaan land, tenting by the way. We know what that means. Who shall lead us on the road? Choose your king today. That is the bottom line. Joshua chose his king, his leader, and his God. And based on that, he did not move. He waited for Moses, the servant of God, to come back down. He's innocent of any of the atrocities that they committed while they were down there. He abstained from those things. He did what he was told, and he stood in faith. Dare to stand like Joshua. That means sometimes you're going to be all alone. That's the way this works. But I want you to see with me here this morning that that's when faith shines at its greatest level of brightness. I'm all alone. I don't have the support I feel I need or that I want, and yet I know what I should do. When we do that, when we step into that truth and abide there, we are standing like Joshua. There's no one with me. I'm not getting any cards of encouragement. No one's patted me on the back. That's not why I'm here. And so I will stand because I trust in Almighty God to save me, just as he did his people. Verse number two, when the dark red sea of doubt billowed in our way. That is a reference obviously, to the crossing of the Red Sea. Joshua, he was there. What a, what a time to live, huh? After you get out of the 40 to 50 years of slavery, the rest of it is just jaw-dropping. When the dark Red Sea of doubt billowed in our way, that, again, has to look like something for us. There are things in this life that scare us to death. We do not see a way out. We don't know what the escape is. And yet we have a God who can set us free, who can lead us through anything. We know that's true because we're watching it with Joshua. How afraid were these people with an army behind them who was coming to destroy them and a sea in front of them that they could not cross on their own? Joshua was there. Joshua will watch Moses lift up his rod and stretch out his hand over the sea. He will watch the sea go back by an east wind, and he and the rest of the nation will cross over on dry land. That's supposed to do something for us. Can you imagine walking across dry land with the ocean on both sides? The scriptures are clear to say to us there was a wall on each side of them, a wall of water. What's holding that? I don't know, but Moses has told us to move. And so they walk across dry land in faith. Joshua is with them. When you read the Song of Moses, the very next chapter, the entire nation cries out to this glorious God and all that he is. He is our God. He's the God of our fathers. He is the God of salvation. They all say it. And we're not to Exodus 32 yet when they make a golden calf. There are those who sing songs and they mean it. This is my God, he will save me, and I will march when he tells me to march. There's nothing I can be afraid of because he is my God. What can man do to me? Those phrases mean something to us. And so when, when Joshua sang that song with Moses and the rest of the nation, he meant it with all of his heart. Let's look just a chapter or two after the song of Moses, Exodus chapter 17. Watch this. There's several things we're going to see about Joshua. <clears throat> Exodus chapter 17, beginning in verse 8. Now Amalek came and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said to Joshua, Choose out some men and go out. Fight against Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him. That's our guy. And he fought with Amalek. Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And so it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. 
And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands became heavy, so they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. And Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. So Joshua defeated Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. Verse 14 is crucial. Then the Lord said to Moses, Write this for a memorial in the book and recount it in the hearing of who? Recount it in the hearing of Joshua that I will utterly blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called its name, The Lord is my banner. The Lord tells Moses, recount it in the hearing of Joshua. Joshua doesn't know it yet. No one's told him this. It looks like Moses doesn't really know either. But Joshua's being groomed in his faithfulness, in his dedication. He's not to the point where he'll wait on the mountain for 40 days while the people commit sin and while Moses can't be found. He's not there yet. But the Lord says to Moses here, recount these things in the hearing of Joshua. God knows. God knows who's going to lead this people across the Jordan. And so it's vital to him now to read in the hearing of Joshua. How many of you bring your children here so that someone will read in their hearing and recount for them the word of God? Why? Because we're being groomed to stand in faith, to stand like Joshua. We're here now for a reason. We can't look at Joshua and say, boy, that's special. It is special, but you're doing the same thing. We bring our children, we bring ourselves to recount that which God has done in our hearing because we are being groomed to serve faithfully, to honor God with everything that we have. The, the power of God was a daily part of Joshua's life. We, we can't miss that. Joshua sings the song of Moses in Exodus. Joshua knows that he divided the sea and he greatly plagued the oppressors of Joshua. He, if he can do that, then he can win the battle against Amalek, right? That's confidence. He's done it before, he's going to do it again. And I will do what I am told. No, it's, no one has told him yet, but he is being groomed and so are we. The final verse, just before us, Jordan rolls. That's where we like to see Joshua. Because this is when he stands in his leadership role. Moses has died, and they are going to cross this river. Now, just before us, Jordan rolls just across the way. Joshua chapter 1, if you'll read that with me. This was read for us on Wednesday night, as a matter of fact. Timing can often be a beautiful thing. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord... It came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you, as I said to Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites. And to the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. This is Jehovah God speaking to Joshua. Everywhere the sole of your foot touches is yours. It's done. I'm giving it to you. But do this. Be strong. And of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, that you may, they may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in, in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The Lord himself speaks to Joshua. What does he tell him? Keep my law and meditate on it. For by it you will have good success. Be strong and courageous. I am with you wherever you go. The, the hymn 
says just before us, as Joshua looks out, just before us, Jordan rolls just across the way. We can safely trust the Lord. He shall lead today. It's not Joshua. There's nothing he can do to get them across the Jordan River. It is God who will back that river up in a heap so that once again they will cross over on dry land. And what a confirmation to Joshua to walk again on dry land where water has always been and to say, he's with us. We're going to do this. He is with us. There is no doubt about it. Now I can move forward in great faith and in great confidence. So with that statement, he will lead the way. What does Joshua do next? Look at the next verse. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 10. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people saying, Pass through the camp and command the people saying, Prepare provisions for yourselves for within three days you will cross over the Jordan to go in, possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. Do you see any doubt in, that, in those words? Get yourself ready. You will cross over. He doesn't know how. The battle plan hasn't been given to him yet, but he knows one thing, God is never wrong. Prepare yourselves, sanctify yourselves, we are crossing that river. What an amazing thing. And his leadership is, is so powerful, he is so devout, not only in his speech, but in his actions, that the people respond in a way that show they trust him and they trust God. Joshua 1 and verse 16. So they answered Joshua saying, all that you command us, we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. Just as we heeded Moses in all things. Oh, that doesn't sound too good. We'll just, we'll just keep reading. Just as we heeded Moses in all things, so we will heed you. Only the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Man, that's awesome. Whoever rebels against your command and does not heed your words in all that you command him, he shall be put to death. Only be strong and of good courage. Now he has a double dose of the same message. First from God, be strong, be courageous. I am with you. Now the people who march across with him, they say, we are with you. We will do anything you tell us. But do this, Joshua. Be strong and be of good courage. We are with you. Who can stop a Christian? Who knows beyond the shadow of a doubt? by the living word of God, that God is with them. Who can stop a Christian who already has that locked in their heart and turns to brethren in this room? And they say the same thing that God's been saying. Be strong and of good courage. This fight will not be easy, and it will not be handed to you. You must stand like Joshua. Joshua is very unique. He's the only man in Scripture who stops the sun and the moon. He cries out to God in battle, stop the sun and stop the moon. And in that day, in the valley of Ajalon, they will be victorious over their enemy while the sun stands still. The Scriptures tell us never again would there be a day like that. And never before it was there a day like that. Joshua. Joshua. If you can make the sun stand still, the river doesn't look like much of a challenge, does it? We can make a river back up. I can make the sun stand still. Well, God can do that. When he sees a heart of courage, we need to know that God looks down upon us every day, looking for and anticipating that heart, like David, to stand before Goliath, like Joshua, to stand by himself on that mountain. God's watching Joshua, and he's saying, I got plans for you. I got big plans for you. Joshua doesn't know that yet. He's called to follow God, and so are we. What can God do with you? What can he do with your children as they grow up and understand the truth and say, you know what? I'm going to give my entire heart to God. I'm encouraged to do it. I believe the word of God. I will do whatever he asks me to do. What can God do with such an individual? Read it. Look at it. We know what he can do. It's not God's fault when brethren fail. It's not God's fault when the preacher turns away and fails the church and his God. It's the individual's fault. Their heart's not where it should be. Dare to stand like Joshua means something. He will die at 110 years old. And we need to read his final words. You know we had to. 
Joshua 24. Try not to sing as we read this. Joshua 24 and verse 14. Now, therefore, fear the Lord. Serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So the people answered and said, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God is he who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage, who did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way that we went and among all the people through whom we passed. Again, Joshua says, You are all going to have to make a choice. But know this. No matter what you think or what you choose, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. No matter what that ends up meaning, we are going to serve the Lord. When you make a decision for your household, tell your household, tell your children, this is why. <clears throat> we're not sticking the muds. We're not party poopers. We're not looking to ruin a fun day. We're going to heaven. And there's a cost to that. There's sacrifice involved. There are decisions that need to, be, need to be made. We cannot flow down the river of sin with the world. Stand in this home with your father, with your mother, with those who stand with you together to say, it doesn't matter what they do. We're going to serve the Lord. We're going to be brought into the promised land and we will be given eternal rest. It is the promise of God. It is given to each one of us. Dare to stand like Joshua. We're going to sing it again in just a moment. It's our turn now. Again, sing it. Think about the things that he faced, the things that we faced, and what we declare to each other we will do today. As for me and for my house, we will serve the Lord. It is an invitation for those who have not yet decided to serve the Lord. Come to the household of God. Be joined to the body of Christ and know that you are eternally saved by confessing the name of Jesus, repenting of your sins, and being baptized for the remission of those sins, living faithfully in his word. Dare, if you will, to stand like Joshua as together we sing the song of invitation. We are bound for Canaan's land Tenting by the...